Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another example video. As example 15, 15, and we're finally getting started with functions. So this is just really quick function introduction, uh, what functions are and what's going on. So uh, make sure you, you know, uh, comment out all the other main stuff and, uh, and that you're ready for this amazing tutorial, okay? Functions are really fun. Uh, they kind of help you make your program modular. Like it's the first step into making it modular and like more with these uh, Lego pieces we were talking about, right? So let's make our Lego piece here. So the syntax, the rule for writing functions is that you have the type, the return type of your function. Void means that it will return nothing. We'll go through all of these. We'll make three different functions, okay? We'll have void, say hi, okay, say hi, and just an empty parameter list, parameter list, and the name of the function, the parameter parameters, and the return. Okay, and remember, main is a function as well. It's just it's treated a little differently, but it's a function just like this. It's the same thing. We can't have two main functions, obviously, because this is where the program uh, runs. But it's the same. It has a return value, the name, and the parameter list. Main does take a few parameters, but you don't have to specify them right here. It takes some arguments and stuff, uh, but it returns an integer, see, at the end of the function. Wherever you return the return value, the function will end. So if I returned zero up here instead of down here, it wouldn't system pause, it wouldn't do anything down here, it would just close down the function right here. So returns are really powerful like that. And uh, they end the function. So here we don't have a return type, so we don't need to return anything. It's just gonna go from top to bottom. So say hi is gonna say, Hi bra, how you doing? How you doing? Like really, really, really excited, and end that line for us. So, what happens if we run our program now? It won't do anything. It will say, uh, it won't say anything in here. We haven't actually used this function. We just created our puzzle piece here. Okay, we need to actually use it in here, and it uses some C out to the screen action. So. Let's say, uh, hi, I am in main, and that line, and then, let's see, let's say, hi, I am in the function, and then in that line. So what's going to happen here, this was completely unnecessary, but you know, I am who I am, so. I do unnecessary stuff. Anyway, say hi. And remember, we said that earlier, that any function you call, this is called a function call. This is the function name and the function header, all right? And this is the function call. And if we had an, a per parameter in here, we'd have to specify an integer in here, okay? But we're not doing that right now. We have an empty parameter list, so we need to say that, okay, I'm calling this function here, and I'm just going to put empty parentheses here because this one tells me to. So uh, what this is going to do is just going to, as soon as it comes down here after saying this, it's going to go into the function, find it here, and then, you know, uh, print all these things out. And that's why we define the function above main so it the program knows that the function exists, all right? If you would have done it down here, the program wouldn't have known that hi actually exists as soon as it got in here because it is called for before it is actually uh, actually defined, you know. So there is a way to do that as well. I'm going to show you that with another function down below in a little in a little while. But let's just run this and see what happens. So hi, I'm in main. Hi, I'm in the function. Hi, bra, how you doing? So it went down, it went into the function, did its thing, and went out. Okay, good. Let's make another function. Let's make a function that takes a parameter and returns a result. So it's going to return an integer. It's going to add two numbers together and return an integer. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're going to have a result out here which is going to take that value. So add numbers, okay, integer a, integer b. So the user can type in two integers into the function and it's going to spit out a result in the form of an integer. If we had void here, you know, we couldn't, we can't access that result. These numbers are just going to disappear. 
Okay, this is the function scope. Anything that happens in here disappears later on. So we'll talk about that more later, but it has to return an integer. So return a plus b, right? There we go. It's going to take the numbers and return the result as a form of an integer. So, okay, let's say result, our result variable here in main equals add numbers, let's say 10 and 5. Okay, so we should get 15. And then we'll just result is uh, result and that line. Okay, let's see what happens. It added the numbers together, 15. Okay, simple. That's a function. We can use this several times in here. We can use this several times in here. That's the good thing about functions. You write them once and then you can use them several times, as many times as you want. So 12 plus 20, 32, whatever. Okay, and uh, let's see what happens now. See, 44, 15, 44. So that's the beauty with functions. They're modular, like you can make one and use them several times. So that's great. Let's make another function. And this time I'm gonna show you using a function prototype. Okay, so this is gonna multiply two things together and return an integer. Actually, we can use double here, why not? Double multiply numbers okay double a double b okay it's good to have the return type the same as the variables you're actually doing in that case you won't lose any data but you're free to do whatever you want here there is no like you know rule in that way but it's logical obviously you want the right correct data coming in so uh, return a multiplied by b okay easy right but what we're going to do, we're going to do some magic here. We're going to put it below here because sometimes you don't want a bunch of stuff b above your main. You want to work on your program. And if you want to see some, you know, function, you go down underneath and you see it there. So what you do then is you take the function header and you put it up here as a prototype. It's much shorter than the whole body of it, the function body. It's much shorter. You can put all these big ones down here and just put all the short headers up here. But what you have to do is you have to specify what return type there is, the name of the function, so the compiler knows that it exists, and the type. You don't even have to write the name of these up here. Down here you have to specify everything. But up here you can just write double. That is going to take a double. So the compiler and the computer knows that, okay, we have a function. It returns a double, it has this name, and it takes these parameters of this, these types. So there we go, multiply numbers. Let's just do this. Let's say double result uh, 2 equals 0, 0. And what we'll do is result 2 is multiply numbers. And let's multiply 0 0.5 to uh, 20.0. So that's going to give us half of that. And the result is result 2. Okay, so let's see if this works. Unless I'm complete goof head. Nope, 10. Okay, see? It worked. So this is a basic introduction to functions. And just function prototype, function body, function header, parameters, and return type, and function name. Okay, and this is the return statement. So this is a big step forward for us and we can start making some uh, cooler examples soon. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.